My name is Irfan Syed, and I'm the product manager for the Mobile SDK. And I'm going to walk you through how to build mobile applications using the Mobile SDK that work completely offline. Let's get started. We're going to start off by walking through the journey of Brianna. Brianna is a developer at Java Brains Incorporated. Her team is focused on building an app for her field sales team. Her field sales team is looking to go at various events and build her contact clientele. In order to do this, Brianna logs in as an admin to her briefcase builder. She has an existing briefcase called JB Contacts Briefcase that's designed for priming her offline use cases, which in this case is contacts. We're going to look at the data sets configured. In the data set, you see the highest level object is contacts. A related object called account has been added to this. And to the account, a related object opportunity has been added so that all the related opportunities could be fetched for that account. Brianna has then assigned this to her user in order to configure this on the client. In this case, Brianna B is her user that has been configured. She's also configured it to her mobile SDK configured connected apps, which in this case is the iOS and the Android push notifications app. Let's look at how the client has configured. Brianna is using the Mobile Sync Explorer template app where she's updating the user sync's JSON file to configure her sync up and sync down operations. Let's look at this configuration file. The sync down operation is called sync down contacts, the sole purpose of which is to facilitate the syncing of the data from the server onto the client. The table or the soup that gets updated when the sync down operation takes place is contacts. And this is where we configure the brand new target type called briefcase. In order to configure the exact three level hierarchy configured on the admin screen on the client, we have an infos JSON object that has the three entities that we care about. In this case, contact, account, and opportunity, along with the field list Priyana cares about. The soup name denotes the tables that get updated on the client, which in this case is going to be contacts, accounts, and opportunities. Priyana also defines the merge mode option, which in this case is override. Should two users attempt to update the same record, the user who updates it last gets to overwrite this. Now let's look at the sync up operation. In order to facilitate the sync up operation, all Brianna cares about in her case is contacts. So she configures it to update only the contacts table and the target and options denote the fields that she cares about. And the merge mode in this case is set to leave if changed. Now let's look at how this works on the iOS device. Just like any other mobile SDK app, Brianna first sees the login authentication screen and logs into her app. As soon as she logs in, she sees a permission screen. She clicks on allow and immediately a sync down operation is performed, wherein all the list of accounts created show up on the screen. We're going to put this device in the offline mode and see if we can access this. We're going to click on John Amos. As you can see, you see the related account. Let's click on this. As you can see, the data is working offline. I'm going to click on the related opportunities. And again, you can see and access the data offline. This particular application is built by Brianna using Swift UI. What this means is she can now also utilize the mobile SDK template for widgets. In the widgets, which is configured right up top, it shows the most recently used update record, which in this case is John, as you clearly saw. We're going to now use the widget to create a brand new contact. John Doe, we're going to click Save. While we're still offline, this new record created is denoted with the plus icon. We're now going to go back online and going to attempt to sync up to the server. As soon as we're back online, we're going to sync up. The sync is complete and her new contact is now saved. Because Mobile SDK is now optimized for Mac OS having built the app using Swift UI, we are now going to attempt the exact same flow on Mac OS. Let's see how it looks. Just like the iOS, it greets you with the authentication screen 
and we're going to attempt the same flow on the macOS app. Again, after login, the permission screen shows up, and as soon as we accept the permissions, the sync down operation happens. You see the exact same list, including the newly created John Doe record show up. Now let's put the device in offline and see if it works offline. We're gonna to attempt to access John Amos, now on Mac. You see account, again, works offline, related opportunities, works offline. And the beauty of having the apps written as 50Y is the same widget, we have a widget equivalent on Mac. There you go, the most recently used record John shows up. We're gonna click on the new button. We're gonna create Jane Doe as the new contact. Brianna now has an updated list of a newly created Jane Doe record. Again, the exact same experience of having the plus icon. We're now going to put the device in online mode. And as soon as the network becomes available, Brianna is going to sync her application to the server. And there you go. So with mobile SDK, we're now able to build apps on not only iOS and Android, but across form factors on Apple using the Swift UI framework. Call to action to all our Salesforce developers. You get access to our mobile developer center to help you get started. We also have a robust Trailhead community should you run into issues. We also have linked templates on both iOS and Android should you choose to get a head start on building applications using mobile SDK. In our example, we went through how to build offline applications using briefcase. So I've linked a couple of useful articles to get started on the briefcase builder. We hope you enjoyed this video and we can't wait to see what you build with the mobile SDK. Thank you.